Now, when I was a little chap, I had a passion for maps. I would look for hours at South America or Africa or Australia and lose myself in all the glories of exploration. At that time, there were many blank spaces on the earth. And when I saw one that looked particularly inviting on a map, but they all look like that, I would put my finger on it and say, when I grow up, I will go there. My name is Neil Safir, and I am an associate professor of history and director of the John Carter Brown Library. The course that I'm going to be giving in winter session is called Maps and Empires, and it's a cartographic journey through the John Carter Brown Library's collection. The John Carter Brown Library is a building that you've probably seen as you've walked uh, by it on the main green and have wondered what exactly is in there. Well, what's wonderful about this course is it lets you find out. The course is actually going to be an exploration of the collection as a kind of unknown land, a terra incognita, to take up a term that was often used to describe certain parts of the American continent in the early 16th century. What we're going to be looking at in the course is how these maps or cartographic representations came to be, how they were developed, uh, who looked at them, who communicated about them, who authored them, and this really comes about because of a whole new range of uh, materials from the last uh, 20 years or so looking at maps as cultural documents. There are five principal points behind all of this. First of all, maps are not passive documents. They actively shape the way that we think about a place, the peoples who live there, and the resources that it can provide. Maps are political documents, but they're not political documents in the traditional sense alone. They are political documents in terms of the ideologies that they represent. Maps are made by many hands. There is the communication between the first geographers and explorers, as well as the pop local populations. It then passes to the people that produce maps, uh, later to those who are reading maps, and finally to those who hang maps on their walls and to discuss maps, which includes a lot of wonderful European painters in the 17th century. Maps represent a wonderful fusion between art and science. They're some of the most beautiful documents that were produced during this period, but they also represent a kind of scientific outlook that were used uh, in order to further uh, political ambitions, territorial ambitions, and conquest as well. Finally, maps are very much unsung documents for historians. They are usually adorning uh, the work of historians, maybe on the cover or title page of a book, but rarely are they put as the corpus of the documentary evidence. And this course is really about showing how maps can reveal things about the history of the world uh, during this period that other documents really cannot. The course will begin with a look at Ptolemaic atlases. They're some of the most valuable atlases that exist, and we have a number of them in the library's collection. We are then move to an iconic map, the 1524 map of Tenochtitlan, Mexico City. This is the first European view of the Mexican capital, and it is based very much on an indigenous map. Later, we'll move to look at the Ortelius Atlas, the first theater of the world that actually contained maps of the entire world and all four continents in a single volume. We'll also look at some other regions, such as the Amazon River region, which became, in the middle of the 18th century, a flashpoint for political conflict between the Spanish and the Portuguese, but that was very influential in terms of thinking about the indigenous populations, the way in which those populations were sought to be managed, but also the ways in which an independent political identity for them and their communities emerged later on. What's particularly exciting about this course is that every day we are going to be looking at new materials from the collection uh, that are manuscript, printed, atlases, globes, 
uh, looking at all of the different ways in which the world was conceived uh, and assessed during this period. And it's a really wonderful opportunity to see historic materials in a very new and exciting light.